Welcome to this presentation on blind chromatic dispersion estimation. My name is Henk Wijmiersch and this is joint work with Pontus Johannesson. We are with the FORCE Research Center on Fiber Optical Communications at Chalmers University of Technology. A conventional receiver for coherent optical communications has a number of stages as shown here. One of the first stages in the receiver is the compensation of chromatic dispersion often implemented using a fixed filter in the time or frequency domain. In future optical networks, the light path may change, leading to abrupt changes in the amount of dispersion. A number of chromatic dispersion estimation methods have been developed, but they are all based on heuristic arguments. The goal of this work is to develop an estimator starting from basic principles. Our communication model involves a number of typical impairments. The transmitted dual polarization signal is delayed, the polarizations are scrambled, differential group delay is applied, and finally the signal is subjected to chromatic dispersion. At the receiver side, amplified spontaneous emission noise is added alongside with phase noise. The received signal in the frequency domain, ignoring the phase noise, is written as shown, where the different colors show the different impairments. A standard receiver operates by compensating for the dispersion while all other impairments are still present. If the chromatic dispersion is unknown, it needs to be estimated. Chromatic dispersion is a spreading of the transmit pulse proportional to the distance. The transfer function is given by h of f, where l is the fiber length. The parameter characterizing the dispersion is denoted by eta and is the broadening of the pulse with respect to the symbol slot. The figure shows the broadening for different values of eta. Note that eta equal to zero corresponds to no broadening. The chromatic dispersion estimator attempts to determine eta, after which an inverse filter can be applied. For reliable operation, the residual dispersion after this filter should correspond to a value of eta well below one. To summarize, our objective is to determine eta, treating all other unknown parameters in the system as nuisance parameters. These parameters include the data, the mixing matrices, the differential group delay, and the propagation delay. To achieve this objective, we resort to maximum likelihood estimation. Maximum likelihood estimation of a parameter x from an observation r corresponds to finding the maximum of the likelihood function p of r given x. When there are nuisance parameters, z, the likelihood function itself is obtained through a marginalization process, which is often complex. We are now ready to solve the maximum likelihood chromatic dispersion estimation problem. Step 1. We express a likelihood function where r is the frequency domain version of the received signal and x is a hypothesized signal with data A, chromatic dispersion eta, delay tau, and combined DGD and polarization mixing as with matrix T. For convenience, we do not write these parameters explicitly in X. Step 2. We expand the square and drop all irrelevant terms. Step 3. We expand the exponential in a Taylor series. Step 4. We take the expectation with respect to the data. Note that the second term in step 3 will be zero in expectation for any zero mean constellation, while the first term in step 3 is constant, so it can be dropped. We end up with a quite complicated expression. However, if we go back to the time domain, we see that the likelihood function can be expressed in a concise way. This expression can be interpreted as follows. The signal z of t is obtained by passing the observed signal r of t to a filter matched to the transmit pulse, corrected for polarization mixing and DGD, and corrected for chromatic dispersion. This signal is then sampled at times kt plus tau. The hypothesized values of t, eta, and tau should be such that the energy of the symbol rate samples is maximized. This can be interpreted as maximizing the eye opening. Some further math is needed to get rid of the remaining parameters, but in the end we find an estimator of eta, 
involving a line search over eta and a maximization over a set of four matrices. The objective function involves the Fourier transform of the match filter output and a frequency shifted version thereof. To investigate the performance of this estimator, we have compared it to a standard blind CD estimator, which is loosely inspired by the constant modulus algorithm. Both estimators take as input a sequence of samples corresponding to 512 symbol slots. We have evaluated both estimators for a 300 and 3000 km link for a 100 gigabit per second communication system. The performance is measured in terms of the standard deviation of the estimates. Here we show the standard deviation of the estimation error as a function of the signal to noise ratio for the 300 km link. We observe a significant performance gain of the ML based method. For the 3000 km link, similar conclusions can be drawn, allowing the ML based estimator to operate already at 5 dB while the CMA-based method requires in excess of 10 dB. Here we show the standard deviation of the estimation error as a function of the observation length. The ML-based estimator requires far shorter observations compared to the CMA-based estimator to achieve similar performance. Finally, we evaluate the robustness to differential group delay for the 300 km link and an SNR of 9.8 dB, corresponding to a beta rate of approximately 10 to the minus 3. Due to the search over a finite set of matrices, we expect the ML-based estimator to have degraded performances as the DGD is increased. This is corroborated by the results, so the degradation is minimal. In contrast, the CMA-based estimator has significant degradations for large DGD values. In this work, we have presented a novel blind chromatic dispersion estimator based on the maximum likelihood criterion. The estimator has good performance at a moderate complexity and can cope well with DGD. For more information about this estimator, its complexity and the connection between CD estimation and timing recovery, we refer to our paper, published in the September 2012 issue of JLT. Thank you for your attention.